I'm going to Sega Genesis pretty much required that you own Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm -hmm. You were considered a pussy if you didn't. This game will forever cement Sonic's place in history as one of the most significant games of all time. Hell, forget games of all time. How about one of the most important characters of all time? This marked the beginning of gaming's biggest rivalry that even continues today. For those of you not in the know, Nintendo had thirdly dominated the last six years of video gaming. If you wanted to do something, it would have to be a Nintendo because no one else could compete. But then, Sonic came along. For the first time ever, Nintendo had competition. For the first time since Nintendo had entered consoles, someone else had market share. Someone else was the cool guy in town. And that was Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, if only it had a better commercial. God, what is this? Next time on Sonic the Hedgehog, Don Robotic is back in action as he tries to take over South Island. What the hell are you doing? Oh, uh, no, nothing, nothing. See you guys next review. <laughs> Alright, we've taken care of Sonic. Raiders were testing out things in Sonic 1, now they knew what the series was truly capable of. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is the best selling game ever on the Sega Genesis, with over 6 million copies, and it definitely deserves it. It just kicks too much ass. Well, it'll be a bit before we get over the obvious sequel, Sonic 3, so we're going to take a little side diversion onto the hilariously yeah. bad Sega CD, and look at one of the few games actually worth playing on it. We'll give this game a 9.5 out of 10. <laughs> Next time on Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic spins on an exciting new CD technology mumbo-jumbo as he pulls off his best Marty McFly impersonation to save the future and a girl named Princess Sally. Next time, Sonic CD. <laughs> Sonic visits the mysterious floating island of the sky. I'm going as fast as I can, dude. It's just being really picky. <laughs> Hold the controller sideways. What? No, I can do this. Don't come on. 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 Don't Sandopolis? Flying Battery? It's the true experience and definitely worth your time. This game is the reason I became a definite fan of Sonic. Yeah, the first two titles definitely helped lead the way, but this one... I mean, wow. I'm certainly not afraid to give this a 10 out of 10. 16 years later, and it's still an incredibly fun game. Our second 10 out of 10 this year! 2010 is awesome! Next time on Sonic the Hedgehog, we head off into spin-off territory as Sonic plays a dangerous game of Pinball Wizard with the mighty Robotnik. Hopefully tilts are legal in this clusterfuck of pinball madness. Next time, Sonic Spinball. Mm -hmm. 
you're just a pinball fan, then use caution. If you're not a fan of either of those things, then it's probably best for you to just stay away. It's certainly not the game you want to play to get the first impression of the series. Go ride the roller coaster instead. Oh, and I know someone's going to ask me this, but yes, I am aware of the Game Gear version, but I never played it, and I hear it plays like shit anyway. So I'm probably not going to even waste my time. Maybe later. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. It's pinball, but with great music. Next time on Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic goes off to the third dimension without it actually being the third dimension to save a bunch of birds. That's right, not platforming your speed, saving birds. Oh, hell, how the mighty have fallen. Next time, Sonic 3D Blast. Or the PC version, if you can find that version, which is the same thing. The Genesis version is absolute crap compared to this one. But as a whole, the game itself just isn't as enjoyable as the main Sonic titles. The structure of the game was incredibly repetitive, there's little to no exploration allowed, and playing it can feel like a chore sometimes. The music's great, and that's to be expected from a Sonic title, but everything else is... bleh. I'll give the Genesis version a 5.0 out of 10. The Saturn version gets a 6.5 out of 10. It would be a little higher if the little times weren't so horrendous. <sighs> so many good Sonic games, so little time to play them. If only there was some way I could play them all at once, you know, to maximize the awesomeness. I got it. Elliot, yes. Bring me everything. Everything? Every everything? Everything. Everything? Everything. Okay. <laughs> choose who you can fight, the game automatically pairs you up with some random person no matter how good or bad the signal may be. I'm sorry, but when I'm playing online, I want to make sure I'm playing with someone I know has a good signal and therefore I have the least amount of lag as possible. If there's one thing I hate, especially in a fighting game, it's lag. <laughs> Finally, after unlocking all the characters, you come to realize just how bare bones single player is. But I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who says that, so I won't risk beating a dead horse. If you're looking for one of the best fighting games on the Nintendo Wii, then look no further than Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. It's definitely one of the system's best titles and should not be missed by anyone who likes a little competition. If you ever want to go around or two with me, you can find my friend code in the description box. My favorite combination so far is Morgan and Yatterman number one. I look forward to kicking your ass. Unless you use zero. In which case, I'll use zero. Zero. I'll give it a 9.0 out of 10. <laughs> action and story, and it's simply a joy to replay again and again. Now, that's not to say the next two installments are horrible. No, far from it. But this one is the one that certainly appeals to me the most as a Metroid title. I'll go more in depth to what I mean when I review those games, but as for now, awesome gameplay, great replayability, and overall, an incredibly fun game. I'll give it a 10 out of 10. Well, I'll be giving a lot of these out lately, have I? What can I say? This game is awesome, and you should definitely try it. There's no better way of starting a series of reviews than by giving the first game a perfect 10 out of 10. But how exactly will the other Prime games compare to the first one? Well, next time we meet, we'll find out by reviewing Metroid Prime 2 Echoes for the GameCube. Until then, I'm Johnny of the Super Gamer Brothers. You guys have a good night. Thank you for watching, and take care. <laughs>
Episode 1 is certainly one of the best Sonic games released in some time. The controls, while different from the classic games, still work well enough to be fun, and I guess it's just me, but the more I play it, the better it seems to get. But I know what you guys are thinking. How does it compare to the classics? Well, I can't tell you that, because the game isn't completely out yet. Yeah, I know that's a real lousy excuse, but honestly, I don't like comparing what's essentially an incomplete game with something that is complete. I can only hope that future episodes truly make the game worthy of the title Sonic the Hedgehog 4. But, if I had to give this episode a score, it's definitely around an 8.5 out of 10. But again, that's for this episode and not Sonic 4 as a whole. Will the other episodes score better or worse? I can't say. But what I can say is, this Metal Sonic figure is fucking awesome. <laughs> Sonic the respect he rightfully deserves, especially because this guy had some of the best 2D platforming games in the 90s. Though the game is not everything I expect from a 3D Sonic game, it's still incredibly fun and should be in every Sonic fan's collection. Hell, even if you're not a fan of Sonic, try the game out. You might end up loving it. Great story, great gameplay, and definitely great music. So, how about you and me make like Eggman's hairline and recede? I'll give it a 9 out of 10. With that said, I'm Johnny the Super Gamer Brothers. You guys have a great night, happy holidays, and take care. Do 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 do
Okay.